Hi, I'm Robert Tolpe, and today I'm talking about women on TikTok who claim to have survived a kidnapping or trafficking attempt when going about their daily lives. These videos are all over TikTok, but I worry that the stories these women are telling may be contributing to mass paranoia and panic about being kidnapped by strangers. This paranoia seems to have started a cycle where women, after seeing videos about trafficking on TikTok, become freaked out by otherwise unusual but not explicitly threatening situations and take to social media making incredibly serious claims about trafficking in their town with zero evidence to back it up, further contributing to the body of alarmist content and misinformation online. Back in 2016, the YouTube story time was all the rage, where creators like Tana Mojo told embellished accounts of their otherwise uninteresting day-to-day -day experiences. We remember these videos as being borderline fictional and overly dramatic, with the quintessential example being the My Uber Driver Almost Kidnapped Me video, which has been made and remixed by almost every story time creator that has ever had a platform online. Looking back, we can laugh at these creators who were able to spin a wild tale out of a mundane occurrence, where their rideshare driver took a few wrong turns and they were freaked out. But recently, there has been a revival of the storytime genre. Only this time around, things have gotten very serious. Now, young women all over TikTok claim to have narrowly escaped a kidnapping attempt, which sounds very alarming until you realize that their experience of almost being trafficked consists of feeling uncomfortable about a man looking at them weird. Instead of the internet being skeptical about their stories, the comment sections of these videos are filled with other women expressing their concern for the creator and sounding the alarm about the rise of trafficking attempts made by strangers. But is any of this concern and panic actually warranted? I'll show you some parts of a video made by a creator named Gracie, where she claims to have been almost kidnapped at Walmart. Y'all, I am literally shaking right now. So I almost just got kidnapped at Walmart. But what was this grand kidnapping attempt that she is talking about? Did someone grab her and try to throw her in a van? Well, not exactly. I glanced over and there was a man about 15, 20 feet away from me and he was just staring at me and we even like locked eyes like I caught him staring and he didn't even look away. He just kept staring at me. And so I looked away and the moment that I felt him kind of shift his position, I bolted and I went to the other side of the store. So a man was staring at her and he shifted his weight and she bolted across the store. The man made no further kidnapping attempts and she got home safely and completely unscathed. Local news reported that the police reviewed the security tapes, revealing that the man in question was just a random dude shopping with his family and not, in fact, a kidnapper. Essentially, nothing of interest happened. This story is representative of many others like it, which follow a similar format. And so is the comment section of the video, where people express that they are happy the creator is okay, and that their reaction was entirely justified and proportional to the situation. It's easy to say that the creator overreacted, but I realize that hindsight is twenty twenty, and for that reason, I don't judge the creator for being cautious and concerned for her safety. I do judge the creator, however, for making an entirely unsubstantiated claim that she was almost trafficked in her town, which she names in the TikTok. That's rather irresponsible and causes unnecessary panic, but it's not as if the creator was lying. She genuinely believed that she was almost trafficked, and that's likely due to the fact that her experience mirrored the countless other videos on TikTok where other people claim to have been trafficked also with no evidence of trafficking other than being stared at creepily by men. TikTok has greatly shifted the perception of how we view the serious problem of the trafficking of young women. Story after story on the app reiterates the narrative that trafficking happens to unsuspecting women who are kidnapped by total strangers while minding their own business in public. While a situation like that is certainly not impossible, the odds of it happening are astronomically low. On average, there are fewer than 350 stereotypical kidnappings every year in the entire United States, a country with over 330 million people. 
the reason why we think this is what trafficking looks like is because when someone is actually plucked from a Walmart parking lot, especially if that someone is a beautiful young white woman, it'll be the only missing persons case the news will talk about for a solid month. What we rarely hear about are cases where undocumented immigrant women, those struggling with substance abuse, or underprivileged people with no family connections are trafficked. These women often know their traffickers and are slowly manipulated into being financially dependent on these individuals. This tactic is far more effective and easier than kidnapping someone in the middle of a crowded Walmart. But the spectacular and shocking image of being dragged away while shopping will always get more attention. The more I watch these TikToks, the more I realize that reality is giving way to wild conspiratorial thinking. Watch this woman describe being drugged and almost kidnapped at Walmart. I was drugged and almost abducted. And the woman was the one who came up to me talking really fast, asking me if I wanted to smell a perfume from her new perfume business. Before you know it, this substance was on my arm. It smelled like perfume. It didn't burn. There was nothing weird about it. Nothing at all. I put my wrist up to my nose like this, and I guess by taking a regular inhale, because I did not sniff it, um, it went into my system by both my nose and through my skin. I instantly began to lose consciousness, so I started to walk backwards. This is literally a 20 plus year old urban legend that will not die and has been debunked over and over again, every single time someone posts a wild story on social media about it. Kidnappers do not pose as perfume salespeople to knock people out with some kind of drug. That literally does not happen. What that woman encountered is someone's aunt trying to sell her their musty perfume. As to why the woman in the TikTok thought she was being drugged, the perfume was probably just really strong, maybe homemade with no quality control, pink sauce style. The human mind is powerful and can really play tricks on people. This reminds me of another hysteria on the rise on social media over accidental fentanyl exposure. There have been many cases of people being rushed to the hospital after touching something they think had fentanyl on it and passing out and acting as if they're dying, only to be told that they never were exposed to fentanyl and that there was no drug in their system. Despite the reality that this woman was never in any danger, the video I showed you went viral and all the comments on it expressed their grave concern about this widespread perfume kidnapping problem. A problem that anyone can Google just once to find out that it doesn't exist. There are many more easily debunkable instances of almost being trafficked on TikTok. Check out this video of a woman being freaked out by a piece of paper in her car door handle. I am like freaking out right now because I literally just walked up to my car and I have, I have this in my car and I've been seeing all these things online. So I'm like, freaking out. It's very, very obvious that the paper is a promotional magazine. Some salesperson was paid to put them on cars to sell mattresses or whatever. That's extremely common. Nonetheless, the comments flipped out that she so much as touched the paper because it could be laced with chemicals. Not only does that not happen, but traffickers do not mark cars, not with zip ties, not with water bottles. And if you find something on your car, it likely means nothing. This has been debunked over and over again, but not a single comment points this out. The algorithm by funneling people who consume similar content and share a similar set of beliefs into the same comment section has created an echo chamber where individuals share baseless conspiracies unchecked. Also, I couldn't help but notice that some of these videos feel like they have an undercurrent of a little a something something. Listen to this woman describe the person who almost kidnapped her. And she was darker complected. Her hair was black and it was like past her butt. And she had a weird accent. It was like she was from, I don't know, maybe somewhere in Africa or something. And she, she was like, hey, 
do you want to come back to um, a hotel party with us? Wow, I'm sure her complexion and ethnicity are very relevant to the story. I do have to admit that the fact that there's a random person inviting her to a party is super sketchy, but where is this conclusion that you were almost kidnapped coming from? It makes me wonder just how many of these trafficking awareness videos are racially motivated. I'm sure part of the reason why these videos are so widely believed without people questioning them is that we are told to believe victims, especially when they are women. And we should, of course. But what exactly are these women victims of? MLM moms trying to sell them perfume? Being glanced at weirdly at Walmart? It is a dangerous world out there and fearing for your life, especially if you're a woman, is entirely valid and warranted. But I feel like fear should be proportional to the risk of actually being kidnapped by a stranger. And this is because having an excessive amount of fear about things that are very unlikely to happen can be maladaptive and puts a significant toll on your mental health. Social media algorithms that amplify misinformation about trafficking and kidnapping are ruining women's lives to the point where they can't even go to Walmart without thinking they're going to be kidnapped. Women can barely sleep a night at a hotel without inspecting the whole room for cameras and locking the place down like Fort Knox. What TikTok taught me when traveling alone? Special lock from Amazon. Double lock. Water cup will fall if someone tries to come in without me knowing. Testing the mirror. If there's no space, leave this place. Stay safe. This is not mentally healthy behavior. So many women are doing this on TikTok and they're staying at a Hyatt. It's not the Bates Motel, you're going to be fine. This has become a form of mass psychosis created by sensational journalism and wild unverified stories online. It has severely lowered the quality of lives of many women and this needs to stop. As large of a problem as this is, I feel like there's no way to undo the damage of misinformation out there. Even if you could reach out to every woman who has fears with statistics and correct information, it's hard for people to logic their way out of their fears. I don't believe there are any easy solutions to this problem. It seems we'll just have to wait for this panic to blow over, which I don't think will happen anytime soon. Anyways, I'm Robert Tolpe, and if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe. And if you want to show a token of support, maybe even check out my Patreon, and I hope you have a good week. Bye-bye!